Welcome to the Flight Club Podcast, a woman's guide to leaning out. We give you a behind-the-scenes look at business launch and growth through the stories of successful female entrepreneurs. Here's your host, Felina Hansen, founder and CEO of Hera Hub. Hello and welcome. I'm excited to dive into my conversation today with Cortland Jones. She is a New York based graphic designer and visual artist who founded the Design Database, the women owned, leading membership based marketplace and community for female and non binary freelance creatives working in visual arts. Her platform bridges the gap in gender parity by providing a safe space for female artists to meet higher, or excuse, higher quality clients, excuse me, connects with fellow creatives to build a community and gain mentorship and sell their physical artwork to new customer. Think Fiverr meets Etsy. <laughs> Welcome to the show today, <laughs> Cortland. Hi, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to uh, get to know you better. I know we've, we brushed uh, elbows there in Las Vegas <laughs> at the uh, International Association of Women event. Yes. Um, and I know when, when, I, when you first came on my radar there in Vegas, I spent some time on your site and checking out all the amazing things that you've created. So I'm excited to share that with our audience. Uh, I know you were born and raised in New York, um, yes. <laughs> and you went to FIT, which is uh, Fashion Institute of Technology, a very, very well-known school. What yes. was uh, that decision to go at, to FIT? Was that your dream, um, or was that something? How did that come about? My dad actually had gone there as a as a boy, but he was um he was there when he was doing um the basketball. Mm. Uh, and he also also did art so I kind of was wanted to, to go there to follow in his steps you know mm -hmm. and because I've done painting and drawing my entire entire life when I was a child I changed to, to design when I got to college and then FIT seemed like the the best um school for me, me at the time and it was a good experience it was just really competitive and you know mostly fashion students there so I wasn't really in that area of design, but it was a really cool school. And I, I think I learned so much about my skill sets there. Yeah, I bet. Absolutely. Just uh, such a, a stellar reputation. I uh, taught when I had a marketing company prior to launching Hera Hub uh, back about 15 years ago um, at uh, the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising here in uh, Southern California, FIDM. Um, mm -hmm. So I know all my students were always, you know, aspired to go to FIT. Um, so let's let's uh, go along your career path here. You've had uh, quite a bit of experience prior to launching um, this particular business, the Design Database, about two years ago. Um, what were some of those first steps after getting your degree from FIT? I did a lot of it, interning at. Um, several magazines. Um, I think that's when I got my like foot in the door. I went, I did um about probably like four fashion, I mean, uh, graphic design and in internships there. I'm um, sorry, I'm stuttering. And, um, that's okay. and then I moved on to working at a working in production and design for about nine years. Okay. And that's when, when I learned that I wanted to actually do more than, than just designing things. I wanted to actually be involved more hands-on with them, um, with the companies, um, assets and stuff. And I think, think that's also how I got in, involved into like building my own company, learning the behind the scenes stuff and how, how many things go, go, go into building your company and then doing the marketing side of it. It all kind of just like guided me to where I am now to learn the ins and outs of being in corporate, being a freelancer being an artist and then put kind of putting all of those skills together. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you've, I'm sure no doubt seen a lot over the last 10 years in, in your industry, a lot of changes. Um, and I would imagine that if I may, I mean, that that's can be kind of a cutthroat industry to get into was how was that experience? Was it cutthroat or was it easy, smooth sailing? 
Um, it's never, I think, smooth sailing, <laughs> but okay, cool. <laughs> it, it wasn't so bad. It was just more like, um, I wouldn't say cutthroat. I would just say competitive, obviously, and um, not always that much fun because of how competitive it actually is. But I mean, it's it wasn't too 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 hard for me to handle, and I feel like I actually grew stronger in this experience. Yeah, absolutely. That makes sense. So, you know, it looks like you had quite a few different um, graphic design freelance positions over the years. Um, let's get to the point where we talk about, you know, act the, the launch of your business, so to speak. I mean, obviously, um, you saw a need in the market and you filled that need. So, so let's get into that, you know, what the business is. But I want to kind of get to that point of like, what made you decide like, okay, I'm doing this full force. This is my focus. I'm going to leave, you know, leave behind the other things that I'm doing, kind of take that leap. What did that feel like? Talk about that process. Yeah. So it started, I believe in 2021 when I got hired for my dream job or so I thought, and it was really terrible. So unfortunately, (laughs) I, after COVID, I mean, sorry, I guess, during the, the beginning of COVID, um, I lost my job at this other company that I I liked, but it wasn't, you know, really that much fun for me there. So I was kind of happy to be, you know, relieved from there. But then obviously I, I'm unemployed. So now, now I need a new job. And then I got hired for my dream job working at this, my company that I wanted to, to be at for like 10 years. And it was like, you know, I finally made it to, to, to that milestone. I was really excited to be there. Um, so that was, I was there from, from beginning of 2021 20, to, I think May. So I was only, only there for like five months because mm-hmm. it was so toxic and my boss was just really controlling and abusive in a way. And it was just not what I thought it was going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and because of that, it, it kind of had me be so triggered to realize how toxic it actually is to be a creative in corporate. And it just kind of had me go through all of my past experiences in my head and realize how it's always been this way. And I've been so like not unaware of it at the time. And I think having this experience really like gave me more of like clear vision into why corporate for me isn't what I want to do anymore. So after I quit that job, I just, I chose to be a freelancer full-time in, in, in creating my own designs for other clients. But I also realized that there is a bigger role for me that I could, you know, step into and that was having my own platform to really help other artists in my same space to build their own dream careers and get higher paying clients and be more in control of their actual careers the way that I want to be myself and that's how I actually launched my company because I was looking at the other um, sites like 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 Upwork and Fiverr and they were just stealing more of our money and just kind of having our value more lowered. And I'm like, this, this is not fair. Yeah. So all of these things really just really pushed me to want to make a change and be that change. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. Awesome. So let's get into the design database. Um, again, I know I, I gave a sentence or two at the beginning at the top of the show, but uh, describe this database, who you serve, what you do. Yes. So it is a freelance platform designed for female and non-binary artists um, who want to find community and, and um, new, new higher paying clients. So I pitch it as Etsy meets Fiverr because I want it to be, a, it's a place for artists to not only be hired for new jobs, but also to sell their physical products too. So it's all on, on the same platform, making it easier for our clients to connect and find um, talent to hire, but also to buy new, new artwork, buy new prints, buy new design, you know, whatever. Um, and it allows for the artists to get more exposure. And because we are we are more of an underserved community, I think it's really important for me to like highlight the female creatives, female creatives, because they are we are just you know more hidden. And it's important for for us to really get our talents out there to get more customers that are worthy of our time because we are constantly underpaid, mm-hmm. which is unfortunate. And um, I launched it in July of twenty. 20- 21. So we're still really new. Um, but already we have about a thousand on, on boarded. So mm-hmm. we're, we're growing really fast and it's been 
a positive experience, you know, a lot of hard work, obviously, like I'm tired all the time, but <laughs> it's worth it. So it's cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Entrepreneurship, not for the faint of heart. Exactly. No, <laughs> never. <laughs> I always love the phrase, you know, entrepreneurs, the only people that leave a 40 hour a week job to work 80 hours a week. <laughs> yeah. culture. Absolutely. Okay, cool. So um, the, the platform, I just want to continue to kind of dive into this, you know, walk us through it. Let's say I'm a female creative, I'm a graphic designer, I want to engage in the community. How do I do that? Yeah, so you join on the platform and as soon as you join, the creatives get a free trial for a month. Okay. Um, so then you can kind of build your own por portfolio on there or or upload your, your current uh, one up your current portfolio onto the same platform so that it's all um connected and you can have your you can um go into the the market marketplace and find new clients who want to hire you, but as as I have it currently set up. It's so that clients and creatives, creatives are, are matched to get together, kind of like like a dating app, a dating app. So um, when clients are trying to find creatives that are in the field of photography or design or whatever it is, the creatives that actually match the talent needs of the client will, will, will be matched to the um, clients directly in their inbox. And also on the other side for creatives, when they want to actually sell their products, Instead of, of like or instead of trying to find jobs, um, they can actually have their shops made on the site too, or they, they can link their Etsy shop to the site too to have that more exposure there. So it allows for the creatives who don't have shops already made to build their own shops on the plat on our platform, and the ones who already have their sites, their shops already set up, they can they can connect their um, site to the, the the design databases platform too. So it's all connected. Sorry, there's a lot of words in there. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. That's that's that sounds amazing. Okay, so and on the other side um, of the table, so to speak, let's say I'm a small business owner, which I am, and I want to go in and find talent. You know, I'm looking for certain design aesthetics for my business. Can I go in and then, you know, I would assume kind of find the right fit through your platform? Yeah. So for the so as, as I said before, so the creatives have um sorry for free. And then pay a fee for the quarterly, quarterly, annual, or or um every month. And then for the client side, clients actually actually start for free too. But they can also, they also pay a five percent commission after the creative is hired. So when a client joins, they are able to to post um as many as many jobs as as they want to post for free. And then they can be matched to creatives that that meet their needs for their projects, or they can go into the uh, portal themselves and and find creatives that actually are in there to look around and, and kind of shop for creatives in a way. Um, and then when when a client goes to the creatives portfolios, they can see, see all their work, or they can actually go in, into their shops to see their their actual products that are for sale. So it's kind of like buying a creative or buying a client or buying a, a product, but it's not. I don't want to say we are buying people because that's not right, but you know, it's, it's it has to be easier for um for creatives for clients to be able to find creatives and to be able to match with their needs. Yeah, absolutely. I love the analogy. I think Fiverr meets Etsy, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it kind of pulls it together. And that I do want to, you know, obviously, I, I think that probably the answer is clear. But I just I want to drill down here. You know, there are platforms like Upwork and Fiverr that entrepreneurs may be familiar with where you can go on and, you know, find almost anything. Like I just hired a cybersecurity expert on Upwork, right? And a graphic designer, a, a publicist. I mean, so many things. So uh, just paint the picture for us of why I would come to your platform versus going to the, the C that is Upwork or Fiverr. Yeah. So for the client side, I would say the most value for it is that we are exposing you to more under, um, more hidden talent, I would say, because so many of these creatives are like fresh talent that have just, you know, been so hidden over the years. And it's important for, for them to get, get more um, exposure. So I believe that on Fiverr and Upwork, the client and the creatives are not, well, not, not the client, but the creatives are not always 
help us as higher quality as clients want. I know with Fiverr, for example, there are so many clients that actually ask for their money back, even after the, the um, artist has, 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 has finished the project, which is insulting to the creative, but also it's just kind of like, it's how the, the site is set up because I think with my platform, the clients are vetted and so are the creatives to, to give um, each side more higher quality and to ensure they have excellent experiences. I've seen so much chaos happening on Fiverr and, and, and Upwork. And I know obviously I can't avoid it all the time for, for myself, but it's me trying to really make the, the process a lot easier and to give more value and higher quality connections for both sides. And also having the client exposing to more female, female, oh my God, female and non-binary artists, because those are also, we have been proven to outperform males, male artists. And it's unfortunate how we are so hidden so that not everyone knows that. And I think so many, there's so many clients out there who actually want to hire more females to their company to add more diversity to them. And I think that's really where I have my site kind of filling that gap. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. Um, I want to take us in a slightly different direction. I hope it's okay, Cortland. <laughs> um, <laughs> so there's a lot of buzz around uh, artificial intelligence as it relates to creating art and graphics and writing. And, you know, the media has been all over it, especially with the release of chat GPT. Um, the darling of the uh, AI writing world. Um, <laughs> talk about uh, on the the graphic design, you know, the creative side, what you're seeing with AI uh, art, um, you know, with with these tools that are out there. How is that changing the industry? Um, that's a question that I don't really know how to answer because I haven't really been involved in the AI world. I don't really know much about it. I've seen, you know news about it, but I haven't really been that involved. And I haven't seen seen how the creatives on my site are, are using it or doing with it. So I can't really answer that question. I'm sorry. Yeah, no problem. No worries. I'm <laughs> something personally I'm interested in. And, uh, you know, just curious if you'd poked around um, just being in the industry. It, it When you step back from it, I'm sure you can agree. It, it's interesting, right? It I is. Mean, yeah. how, how will this change things? I know uh, here at Hera Hub, we have quite a few creatives and artists and, and a lot of writers and a lot of the conversations we've been having in some of our events have been, you know, some people are a little scared to be frank, you know, like, hey, I'm a content developer, I'm a writer, how is this going to change my business, my industry, am I going to be cut out of the the picture, you know, if somebody can just go on and, you know, have open AI, right? sales copy for them, you know, why do they need me, that type of thing. So it will be interesting to see, uh, you know, the development of this and what this will do to to all the creative industries. I, I don't think anyone's going to get cut out of the picture. I think it's more, you know, as an entrepreneur, uh, uh, you know, both of us, it's about seeing the opportunity and learning what it is and how to use it as a tool um, and, and, up our game. I know in writing, I've, I've been using it quite a bit and it's, it's pretty interesting. Yeah. I, I think it's really cool. And I've seen, I've done, I've been more involved kind of with the NFT side more than AI. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. like that's, that's really where I've been having my most um, interest in at the moment, but AI is so cool too. So I really want to, wanted to dive more in, into that too in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Well, since you've got some experience with uh, NFTs, what are your, what are your thoughts on in the industry? What have you seen, you know, even over the course of the last six months? I think it is being seen more and more as a scam, which I it kind of concerns because I actually talked to a founder recently who has who actually creates her own NFTs, and she was telling me how like she's a little. Scared, I'm scared about what's happening with NFTs, and I don't, I don't, I don't know much, much about it, like either, you know, to go into it that much. But I'm just kind of, I, I see it as our future at the moment because it's, it's becoming like a huge thing now, and it's, it's getting more and more popular, and it's becoming our new way of, I guess, currency. But I just, I don't understand why so many uh, artists that I talked to recently are. They are saying it's a scam because mm. I don't, I'm a little scared yeah. of that too, you know? 
Yeah, no, absolutely. It is. It's tricky. I mean, I I totally see both sides. I think it's a it's an amazing opportunity to yeah. um, to create things that you know are are not fungible, as they say. You know, that can't be copied, so to speak, because that's a huge issue um, with yeah. anyone's art. So, um, yeah, interesting. All all things that are evolving constantly, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's fun sure. to dive in. Awesome. Well, Cortland, um, let's talk about the website. Um, if folks are interested uh, in learning more, what's you know, where do they go to kind of dial in, get more info? And then I also want to talk about you know what's on the horizon for the business. What are some of the things that you're looking forward to here in 2023? Yeah, so our site is the design the, the database.net. The design database.net is our website. Um, and my we um are launched already, but we are currently still having our, our back end uh, under construction at the time because we have a huge list of creatives that are on our beta beta list. So we are trying to onboard all of them. So the back the front end of the site is up and we are trying to have our new new website relaunch and up and running later this year. So that's one of, of the, the, the things that I'm really excited about this year is to have the, the new site really launch fully to like the alpha version of it. And we are, we, we've been, been trying to build a new platform for the last few months. So it's a huge project, but it's coming along really well. I'm excited to have our new platform and the new um, shops ready for the creatives to start uploading their artwork to, to sell their products on there, which is our biggest next step. Um, and I think what's also really cool with our new site is that we are allowing more educational tools for the creatives to, to, to kind of guide them to learning how to navigate in this world of of being a freelancer. So we're having more podcasts on there and more courses and and we are, are doing more events start, starting this year too. We're going to have our first um, collaboration with artists to do a in-person um, class for creatives to come in to learn from other artists how to do new um, new uh, I think it's an em- embroidery design class we, we are doing first. So that, hmm. that's really exciting for us. Um, and we're going to be doing more podcasts that I'm currently doing now with with other artists to collaborate there and, and share more stories to the community of artists, you know, telling them how, how they got started to inspire others. So we have so many things happening now that that's going to be a really good year. And I'm really excited for it. Awesome. Awesome. It sounds like you are up to some amazing things. I can't <laughs> wait to check out the platform. Well, Courtney, Cortland, excuse me. Um, thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, I'm excited to see what you build in 2023. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for joining this week's episode of Flight Club, sponsored by Hera Hub. We look forward to sharing more success stories with you soon. 